How's it going everyone? Today we are going to be making a thermal detonator from Star Wars. Everything you need from this build can be found locally or on Amazon and that description list will be below. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to break off the plastic tabs on the sides of the Christmas ornament. Once you've broken those off, you'll need a flat file or sandpaper to sand it down smoothly so it's flush with the ball. You can avoid a lot of this work if you don't want to add the electronics to your thermal detonator and you want it just for show by simply just getting a plastic ball from your local dollar store. Then you won't need to sand or cut any of the ball. If you're choosing to go ahead without the electronics, you can skip to the 2 minute 45 second mark of the video and just press on with the details. Next you're going to drill out a total of 5 holes for the electronics to fit into. One directly on top for your on off switch, one below for your red LED, and three along the rim for your three forward facing LEDs. After your holes have been drilled out, you'll want to ground a round file and start cleaning up the drill marks. You want to make sure that each hole is big enough for the electrical component that will be going in the hole. Make sure to remove all your burrs and test fit your parts. Next you need to add leads from your on off switch. This will help you out later when you go to wire it into the rest of your harness because you'll have more space than being crammed up in the top half of the ball while soldering. Next you can work on the rest of your wiring harness. Everything is wired in parallel, meaning positive to positive, negative to negative. The next step is to use masking tape to make a template out of half of the ball. Now you'll only need a half of this, but you want to cut it into four sections so you can transfer those to a one millimeter sticky back craft foam. Mask and tape on the craft foam and trace until you have enough panels for your thermal detonator. Once you have all your pieces traced out, it's time to cut. Remember the important thing with sharp or hot objects is always watch your fingers. You will need a total of 16 panel pieces, leaving just enough space between them for the details on your thermal detonator. Next, begin adding your pieces to both halves of the thermal detonator. And be sure to cut out the excess foam that's covering the holes that you drilled out previously. Once you have added your detail panels and you've removed the excess foam for your electronics, you can go ahead and install your on and off switch. Make sure that the lock nut behind it is nice and tight so you don't have a rattly on and off switch. Now it's time for more details. Thermal detonators have a raised area on the top of them where their on off switch is. Ours will be used to cover our on off switch and give the aesthetic that the movie prop would have. This can be easily done using two layers of the one millimeter sticky back craft foam. Once you finish that, you can begin working on the rest of your wiring harness. You want to make sure that your on-off switch runs from one side of the battery to the same side of the wiring harness because the on-off motion is what will cause the interruption in the circuit turning it on and off. And then once you have that, 
go ahead and test to make sure everything works and then it's ready for plastic dip. Once plastic dipped, you're ready for paint. I'm using Deco Art's Dazzling Metallic Shivering Silver. It has a very nice high contrast and reflects very well in light and pictures. I'll also be using Folk Art Sterling Silver Metallic and Folk Art Charcoal Black. These two colors mixed together give you a really nice gunmetal gray. I'll also be using Folk Art's Painted Finishes, Dark Rust, and Light Rust Coloring. I'll be using the two rust colors because I want my thermal detonator to look like something that was scavenged by a Jawa, fixed, and resold. I'll also be using the Deco Art Silver Pen. Using your Folk Art Sterling Silver and Folk Art Charcoal Black, you will make a dark gunmetal and just give it a rough coating all over the entire thermal detonator. I like to work from my darkest color to my lightest because it gives it a deeper perspective of color change and wear. Once you've done this, you will use a slightly brighter mixture of your gunmetal paint over top of it until you have a good, worn gunmetal color. Up next is the Deco Art Dazzling Metallic Shimmering Silver. Now a little bit of this paint goes an extremely far distance. You're going to be using a dry brush technique with this. Applying paint to the brush, removing paint from the brush, and then lightly brushing over the edges and pulling paint in each different direction to mimic scrapes and scratches. Now onto the rust. You can do this in a wet brush or dry brush technique. You can also weather it down to get a runny, in the rain rust texture. First, you want to start with the darker rust, getting in the lowest parts of your props details. Make sure to get them in between your panel segments and anywhere that deep dark rust would be hard to clean. Now to add the bright red surface rust, you're going to go over the same areas, but you're going to dab it on, let it sit, and then blend it to get a more rich and vibrant rust color and texture. If you find that you have added too much, you can use a paper towel or a rag to wipe some of it off, or use a dryer brush to spread the paint into a more even, natural looking form. Once it's completely dry, be sure to seal your paint. You can either use Mod Podge or Clear Coat to give it a nice protection against the elements. And there you have it. Thermal Detonator. If you liked what I did and you'd like to see more content, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell, if I have a bell, since I'm new at this. Until next time, keep crafting.